Hi, uh, John Brindell from Agile Off-Road, and we're going to do a, a walk around of a Winnebago Rebel that we did recently. Now, uh, yeah, it's a Winnebago Rebel, but it's also just uh, a Sprinter 144-2500. There's a few things that are specific to the Rebel that I'll point out, but a lot of the stuff can just be done to your 2500 four-wheel drive. So let's dig in. We'll start from the front. We're going to go around this thing and show you all the goodies. So first off up front, you're going to see our Telluride bumper. This is on the VS30 chassis, so this one's the, the V6. We also have this available for the all-wheel drive, which has a new four-cylinder. One of the key features of this is we keep the cooling all in place. So all the air that goes into here is going to be forced to go through your radiator. That's really, really crucial. Probably people are seeing that in the hot summer months now. They're noticing their vans aren't running up to spec. This is going to keep that running nice and cool. So, we've got our Telluride bumper. You're going to see we've got the uh, uh, Distronic here. Uh, we've got our, um, our fair lead on here. We're big fans of the Factory 55 stuff. We've also set this customer up with all his recovery stuff. We use the, uh, I think it's the Sawtooth Kit. It's perfect size for the Rebel uh, or for the Sprinter, excuse me, and allows you to uh, cover, cover all your bases. <coughs> Along with that, we got our Ferrata light bar. Ferrata light bar is nice and heavy duty. We put the LP9s on here. Now this whole system is controlled by Switch Pro. It's the, the I forget what they call it, the RC, RCR Force 12 or whatever. It's basically the this, this Switch Pro. Um, we love using that thing. It's got a lot of features that are super cool. Um, we can actually turn things on uh, just with inputs. I think there's up to three inputs. Don't quote me on that, um, but if you have questions on it, we can help you or you can check it out on, uh, on their website or our website. And so we can actually like turn on backup lights when you're putting this thing in reverse. We can actually turn on auxiliary backup lights with super cool features. So we're also controlling the LP9s on that. We do have the uh, Agile fog light kit in it. These are steel brackets. They're not plastic. So they don't deteriorate in the sun. They don't deteriorate under heat. Super well made. Uh, they actually have a rubberized powder coat, uh, which has worked out pretty well because um, there's debris coming at the van this way. This has looks like some Squadron Pros. We typically run the Pros. We do offer the, the Sport Light as well. We offer the DOTs. This will plug and play with your factory system. So uh, you'll also notice we've got a place for his license plate up here so you can be quote unquote California legal. Uh, this has the VR12. We're going to run a minimum of a 12,000 pound winch. This one has the synthetic uh, winch. This is also uh, um, has a access to your plug. Real easy here. So you can see that you can get to all that. You can also kind of see as you're reeling up your wire, you can come in, you can look over the top to see how you're wheeling in. Um, skid plate in front. We've got our agile skid plate. Um, that pretty much also, there's a little skid plate tied into this Telluride in the front. So as you're looking at that, you'll see there's a nice little feature in there. Um, up, up top, we got this is the Onyx 40 inch. We really love the, the Baja designs for all of our forward facing lights. You're going to notice that all of our forward facing lights are Baja designs. LP9s, uh, the, uh, uh, the Squadron Pros, and then the Onyx up top. Okay, so let's dig into the engine compartment. Um, another thing we do, um, we do a replacement horn kit. Pretty simple, it's real plug and play. Uh, real simple to install. Probably the hardest thing is pulling off the factory grill. So as you dig into the engine compartment, you're gonna notice a few different things in here. Um, doesn't really stand out to you because we try and tie everything into the factory to make it look as factory as possible. This is a Winnebago specific item. This is the Timberline uh, heater. We bring the air intake up here. One of the main things for doing this, well, we bring it up here to, to keep it in a cleaner environment, easier accessible, serviceable, get rid of the RV stuff underneath the van so that it's not getting beat up and, and all that from when you're taking it off road. Another key thing is we had it, a heat exchanger. We're going to tie into the engine over here. Um, coming out of the, uh, uh, the firewall, there's like a uh, damn you know, the, the heater core underneath there. We tie into to the one. And then we also, we add a little pump in there. That pump allows us to recirculate when the engine's not running. So the benefits of this are, we can run the furnace and heat the engine while the engine's not running, or we can heat the house 
with the engine while the furnace isn't running. We could give you more details on that, um, but it works super, super slick. So let's say you're going up to, you know, like some of these knuckle heads, they want to go up to the, uh, to the Arctic Circle in the, in the winter, and uh, they want to be able to be in 40 below de uh, degrees. You could actually just run your furnace the whole time when you're sleeping overnight, turn on that circulation pump, that'll keep that motor nice and toasty. Uh, we've got uh, Power Control X by TTE. This is about 36 wheel horsepower. That's a programmer that we add in. Nice little bracket mounted up in there. Um, another big key feature we do is onboard air. So the onboard air is full setup. We've got chromoly tabs. We've got nice air B fittings here. These work super slick. This customer has a locker in it. You'll see over here we've got our locker. That locker has the solenoid stainless steel hose going all the way to the back. Stainless steel lines everywhere. Um, works out really slick. We've got a uh, air source in the back, air source up front. We do have some nice little hood struts to make it nice and convenient for when you open up the hood, you don't have to worry about the prop rod. Um, I think that kind of covers the engine compartment. And uh, so let's check out some other stuff. <clears throat> oh. One of the key things we have on this, this does have a rip kit on it. This has our new auxiliary, our max auxiliary shock. It's got a billet lower mount. This customer is running 275, 7017, so we didn't have to do any uh, active cruise control programming. Also, we don't have to trim too much in the fenders to, to open it up for the 275s. When we get into the 285s, we have to do a lot more cutting and trimming, make it look really nice. And um, it's got our big brakes on this, so we got to do big brakes front and rear. The Alcons have been fantastic. They really, really can stop this rig. Um, skip plate, transfer case skip plate. We've got a 40 gallon tank in this. We either do a 47 or a 40 gallon. On the Winnebago's, you do have to run a 40 gallon tank. This also has the correction for the mileage to zero in it. So we're actually taking the fuel module from underneath the seat, we reprogram it so that your fuel mileage to zero will be fairly correct. But keep in mind there's some issues with, not issues, but with the SMB tank, it's gonna read full for a long period of time because the, sunk, the float is sunk. And but as soon as it starts calibrating from there, we'll start calibrating that mileage to zero for you. Um, it's got an AMG dash. It's got folding mirrors when you lock it. Mirrors will automatically fold. We've also disabled lane assist on this. Um, it, it's a really nice feature if you've had one of these vans. Uh, you don't have to go in there and turn off the lane assist every time you get in it if that's what you prefer. It is something that we disable, you cannot bring it back. We also removed the governor in this. So um, our shop van we've had up to 103 miles an hour, which I would not recommend. I'm sure that was on at a closed course, but, um, and I'm sure that was downhill with the wind in its back, but 103 in a sprinter's booking along and uh, it, would, it, it allowed us. Um, some additions to the roof rack. So Winnebago has our own roof rack. I forget who makes it. It's like back, blackwater, whatever. Um, so we add lights to this. And again, these functions will come off of the Switch Pro. We can turn on one, which another cool feature on the Switch Pro is we can have one switch turn on all three lights, or we have three switches that will independently do them. So you can add several inputs to one switch. It's a cool feature. Uh, we've also got the locker on that as well and the onboard air all that's done on the switch pro so super super slick um starlink this has the new 12 volt conversion starlink that thing just sips power so you can pretty much run the starlink all day long this one's black uh, mine has the white one i wish it had the black it looks pretty slick it's also got a nice little black uh black cover on it uh, we did a midland uh GMRS radio you can see the antenna right there uh, it's about as, about, about as high as we want one, you know. Um, hopefully it doesn't get pulled off on brush. It's got our level and tray, relocated solar panels, and the max tracks. You'll notice this one has four max tracks on it. If you own a Sprinter, my recommendation is carry four max tracks. I'm not trying to sell you more, but sometimes two just won't do enough. These things don't have enough juice in the motor to get you going, and they probably will pull off the max tracks and get stuck again. So. Let it give a running start by four. Um, Luminous Lab, this one uh, has their new finish on it, which is pretty nice. It's got a different, you know, like matte finish. And in the rear, of course, you're seeing the, the, the big brakes in here. 
but this has our full, full rip. It's got a replacement rear spring, so we eliminate the block in the rear. We get rid of that, um, we get rid of the high heels that your van's sitting in when we get rid of the block. Makes it handle far, far better by geometry. Not necessarily just because we changed out the spring, but we actually removed the frickin' box from underneath it. This has our new 2.5 shocks. These are digressive valves. So digressive valve in short, gives you a lot more uh, road holding at low speed and doesn't increase as, as it goes at higher speed. So if you're hitting a pothole on the road, you won't get this really, really harsh ride. So that's a kind of a brief description of the digressive valve. And it is a true two and a half inch shock on the OD. So it's probably two and a quarter on the ID. Um, and then we've got our shear brackets top and bottom. The shear brackets have been really, really nice. They're uh, make you feel more comfortable when you're down places like Baja, things like that. Upper shock bolts have been kind of notorious for um, coming off, you know, in the worst places. Uh, lowers, not so much, but we've had a few people fold them up. But on top of that, our lower shock bracket has reinforcement for the bump stop, which we do see a lot of bump stop failures on that. So it's kind of the rear. Oh, um, 28 gallon auxiliary tank. So this guy's actually got 40 plus 28, 68 gallons times, I don't know, 15. Th some serious range in the Sprinter. So this guy's, uh, you know, good thing he's got a bathroom on board. So uh, if he breaks, he can do it whenever he wants. Let's wheel around to the back and see what's going on back here. We've got, a, this customer actually had this van. He bought it at a dealership. He had some of this things on the back. Uh, these are flare space panels. So he's got a tire rack for himself and he's got a box, which, you know, we offer a lot of that stuff um, and is what it is, but they're, they're kind of cool. Uh, we, we did on this point, on this client, uh, because he planned on taking it off road. Um, we've got the rapid precision valves on this. Um, we've got a gauge that clips on there. You pull this thing out. You can read the pressure as it goes down. You can air these tires down extremely fast. So if you're going from say 70 down to 25 PSI, literally probably nine, 10 seconds of tire will air down that quick. Uh, rear bumper. This is a uh, backwoods rear bumper. It's got a nice little step plate. So when you open up in the back, you can step right up in, which is pretty cool. And got that. Now, since we're in here, let's show you some of the cool, cool stuff we've done. We're not interior guys, okay? But we love doing the electronics on these sprinters. We're also starting to do some plumbing, which is, again, it's not what we do, but we're drawn into it. And when we're coming up with some really nice kits, we'll show you a couple of things we've done in here. This has Rome rig, but it's 960 amp hours of battery. This is serious, serious battery. Really, really well thought out. Uh, Reed, Reed and the guys here do an exceptional job installing these. We get great support from uh, the guys at Rome rig. This is a 23, so it's actually got um, alternator. I believe we changed, we did change out the alternator. This alternator, I think, is pumping about 250 amps, plus 50 amps on the DC to DC charger. So we can see as many as 300 charging amps. Serious power, you know. Um, and I believe Reed said at one point they've seen it like at 320. So between that system, this. There is just some major, major power here. Um, there's breakers all in here. There's batteries. This one has three batteries. You'll see two of them here. One's underneath. There's also an option for a fourth battery. We have one of those in the shop being done right now. Um, and that's, that one's a pretty unique, unique one for an individual. Batteries on this side, water on this side. So Winnebago puts in a roughly about a 24-ish, 25-inch gallon tank. This one's now been upgraded to a 35. Um, we've also done a water filtration system. So we've tied all that in together. Again, this van's kind of being set up for a little bit of cold weather. The inside, there's an actual heating line. We've run a heating loop underneath this tank. And what that enables us to do when the client's running his, uh, um, in cold weather conditions, we're heating this cabinet. And that cabinet will stay nice and warm 
and allow that water not to freeze as well where the pump is. Winnebago puts a pump down in here. It's pretty much right down on the floor. Not a lot of insulation. Now that we've got that heating uh, loop in there, it's going to keep everything nice and warm while the heater is on. Uh, you can see where we've got our client set up. He's got our onboard air. This is our onboard air hose that we supply with it. Um, and then here's this Factor 55 kit. This little kit comes with pretty much all the stuff you need for getting one of these sprinters unstuck. You know, these winches aren't worth anything unless you have the accessories to get yourself unstuck. So keep that in mind. We have all that stuff here. We need to help you out. Um, cool feature about the Rome rig is there's a nice dash up front. We've also incorporated their switch panel that's on the refrigerator to where you can kind of incorporate all the switches. Everything's uh, got great legends on it things like that, so it works out really good. And again, separate filter um, for water. So now he's not carrying extra water in, you know, drinking water in that. So another cool feature that we do, these particular, the, the Rebel comes only with the window on this side. We've also added a window on this side. We put a nice little cover on it. So let's take a closer look on this side. We'll cover a few of the more of the interior things. And another cool feature that we did on this van is some of the things in the dash um, and some leather shielding seats. So um, I've been driving these sprinters for some time. Seats have been, I don't know, I, I, I could kind of, kind of sit in anything, but lately I've been going on some longer trips and the backs of my legs haven't been feeling so good. So I may, might have to hit up shielding myself for some of these seats because they sure feel comfy. These are full leather. They're also, they've got, um, uh, two armrests and it seems kind of weird to put two armrests on there but actually when you rotate the seat around and you've now got armrest in a place where you could use it when the seat's in the rotated position it's pretty pretty cool so you take a look inside um, we should probably go in through the front but you can see some of the some of the panels here uh, that match from rum rig we've also you'll see a switch up on the panel for the uh, for the Starlink for the 12 volt system and uh, let's take a look at these front seats. And these things are just absolutely beautiful seats. Uh, we've got our Inhabit floor mats in there. I don't believe they've got these completely installed, but uh, this thing's getting you know picked up in a few more days. Um, and the Navidoc dash. Navidoc dash allows you to mount all your RAM components in there. Um, real simple little track that's up there. There's also a new feature coming out where we put another track above it. I think there's a prototype here we can show you, but this thing's pretty slick. I have it in mind. I absolutely love it. He's got a pretty big iPad on there. We'll see how well that holds up, um, but it should be fine. We also installed, uh, he supplied a Midland Jeremiah's radio, and you'll see where we've got a bulkhead fitting down below where we mounted it. Um, and the units are really tucked inside the dash, so as you look at this van, there's not a whole lot of, like, just weird stuff just attached to it it's sticking out uh rum rig beatbox um i have one of these they're fantastic um they're the, the guys love installing them here they fit so well the stereo system sound really really well um best to be streaming music uh serious radio probably doesn't sound the best on it or if you have you know downloaded music it really plays the best but that's a a really nice clean system that we do here um, other than that, the interior is just Winnebago, so if you want to check that out, you can go to their website, see some of that stuff. Um, but these seats, if you want to check those out, we have them at the shop for you to come in and take a seat in. Um, and there's some little critical features on the height. You don't want to go too high, too low. We're pretty dialed in with that, and the folks at Shieldman help out quite a bit. Um, and... Uh, as you'll see, kind of, I mean, some of the, I own one of these Winnebago, so I actually travel in it quite a bit, so I've helped out a lot of the customers, giving them solutions for things like storage. Like, one of the things we do is he had his uh, induction top. I don't think he's used this thing at all, um, and uh, he's getting really close to being complete here, but we moved his induction top in this tray up top, and we actually move it in underneath the... Uh, uh, the bench seat here, keep it out of a nice tucked out way. But, um, you know, the dash in the front, we've also got an AMG dash programmed in. Uh, we've got folding mirrors, we've got the Distronic, the governor, 
uh, done. Um, all that's kind of stuff you're not really seeing, but all these features help you every day you drive your van, get in the van, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna use all this stuff. So uh, there, this thing has a number of upgrades, and I believe that all these are enjoyable upgrades, and uh, you can have them done here all at once, or you can come in and have them done over a long period of time. Um, on all the sprinters as well as the Winnebago. The Winnebago is a little bit trickier because we have to remove a, a running board. That running board actually, not great, it's great step, great step, but for off-road, the brackets that hold it on get, get, get tangled up in the dirt. So we, we don't enjoy removing them, but we do remove them. And on this particular van, we removed them and we've installed amp steps. You're also gonna notice that we put on a different light. That's a rock light. That rock light can actually be triggered separately off of the Switch Pro. So basically, when you open up the step, you're going to have this light come out, show you where the step is, boom, get in and out, close, close the door, it's going, to, it's going to retract. As well, we've got that set up to where we can manually retract it down, we can have it off in the off position, or you can man manually retract it up. So we have all those features available to you. And then, again, with the, uh, those, those rock lights can actually be turned on separately using the, uh, um, the Switch Pro. So another one of the cool features of the Switch Pro. As well, that step is functional on the passenger side. So for the passenger side, you got your entry in and out while you're camping. Super cool, so you just lock that, when you get to your campsite, lock that sucker down, turn it into off position so that when you open and close the slide door, the step's not going up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, it's, they're, they're really, really bad. They're a really nice step. The thing I love about them, I have them on my van is, now you got all this ground clearance. Uh, it's not a, it's not designed for for, for dragging on rocks, um, but they're out of the way, and you're not going to hit stuff. So. so this van has the uh, I/O pedal in it. Basically, I/O pedal is a, a pedal controller. It allows us to to operate via Bluetooth on your phone or through this little I call it a hockey puck. Um, it's this big. We clip it into your dash. And as, you're, as you turn on your vehicle, you'll be able to have different settings. So you've got, what's cool about this is you can actually put it into an anti-theft mode where the throttle will not work at all. You can put it into a valet mode, you can, which is like it will only have a certain amount of power. Um, kind of like putting your van in lint mode. Um, the other feature would be, it's got an eco mode. So think of all those features as detuning the van. So some, some only allow you to tune it, this one allows you to detune it. As well, it's got a sport setting, and then there's an extreme setting, which I have a tendency to leave those on. So we just clip this guy right in here, stays on your dash, you can access it there. You also got all those same functions on your iPhone, or on your, on your phone. As well, another cool thing that we've been doing, um, horsepower. So these things, these sprinters don't have a ton of horsepower. When you put on these big second alternators on these vans, they chew, they suck up a lot of power. I would think, you know, I usually tell people they take about 12 horsepower. So what we've done with this van is we actually, when it starts up, we're automatically, the alternator's hooked up. But again, going back to our, uh, um, our Switch Pro, we can actually turn off the alternator. So the only thing that probably, I would say, kind of sucks about it is if you forget to turn it back on. But it, let's say you're driving a bunch of hills, you're out in um, you know, Colorado, or you're pulling some big hills, turn that thing off, it's like adding 15 horsepower to your van. Um, you're off-road, those same conditions apply. You're trying to go through a, you know, a pretty, you know, kind of a difficult section, and the van's kind of struggling to go through because it has a lack of power. Turn the alternator off, now you've got a little bit more giddy up in there. So works really well. And again, all this can be done with a Switch Pro. They make a, a, an, a, an, eight, an eight button switch and a 12. The 12 does have a few more features that the eight doesn't have. We do offer them both here. So uh, uh, let us know, we'll work with you and get you figured out. Okay, so that was it. Uh, I'm sure I missed a few things because there was a lot done to this rig. Um, it's a badass sprinter. It's got a lot of cool features on it. People will see this thing driving down the road. You might not think of all the stuff that is possible to do it or what we've done to it. Um, it's not extremely over the top, but it's got all the cool features. A lot of these features I've done on my van, I absolutely love them, absolutely enjoy everything about it. 
the fuel mile, the, you know, the extra range, the extra water, the extra power, all that stuff makes a difference. When you're going out and you're using your rig, you can look good, and you can look good trying, but you really, you really have to work well. This van has the rip kit on it, the locker on it, the onboard air, the features for airing up, the airing down, all the cool stuff. So when you get to the trail, you're prepared. You're gonna show up to these events. You're the first guy aired down. You're the first guy up the hill. You're the guy that knows what to do. You're in this very, very well-prepared rig. Um, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of like a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, so to speak. It doesn't look over the top, but extremely, extremely prepared. So you want something like this, hit us up at the shop. Uh, give us a shout. Uh, we're doing the lockers all the time. We're doing bigger tires on this. You want something a little bit even more aggressive, uh, we can do that. But this van is set up. It's also prepared with safety features such as the winch, uh, the recovery equipment, uh, the lockers, the safety feature. I mean, all this stuff. It, this is a very, very well prepared van. Like I said, I might have missed a few things, but let us know what your van interests are, how we can help you out, and uh, we'll get you we'll get you set up. We can either do it all at once or just piece it together. In this case, we did it all at once on this rig. Very, very well done van, and we hope you enjoyed it. And if we can help you, let us know.